Hi, and welcome to a new episode of Branding with Friends, the show where branding meets key small business and service business topics. Here, you're going to learn tips straight from experts on everything from thought leadership to SEO to hosting a podcast. We focus on what you can do right now to use these topics and the power of branding to attract your ideal clients. I'm your host, branding expert, Annie Franceschi of Greatest Story Creative. I help service business owners tell their story and show their value through clear messaging and consistent branding. I'm also a former Disney storyteller, professional speaker, and the author of the best-selling book, Permission to Try. And today I'm gonna to introduce you to one of my new friends in the business world. If you have been wondering about your email marketing and having an email list and what does that all mean and how do I do it better, you are going to love today's episode. My guest today is the wonderful Mira Cawthon. Mira is an email market, marketing strategist and three times Amazon bestselling author of the books, The One Hour Content Plan, The Blog Startup, and But I'm Not an Expert. That sounds like a good one. Um, <laughs> she's also the publisher of MiraCoffin.com, an award-winning site listed as one of the top 100 sites for solopreneurs in 2020, 2018, and 2017, and the popular Create Planners. Using her unique profitable email system and addicted business framework, she makes powerful marketing strategies simple and relatable so that business, small business owners can build a tribe that's addicted to their zone of genius. Mira, thank you so much for being here today. I'm so glad you're here with us. Yeah, I'm really excited to be here talking about one of my favorite topics, email. Absolutely. Um, well, tell us, you know, we know a little bit about you already. Tell us a little bit, where, one, where you're based um, and how you became so passionate about email marketing of all things. Sure. So um, I'm based in Singapore, born here, bred here. So um, just to kind of give you guys a little hint, this now it's, it's 8 p.m. at on my side of the world. So whenever you see me on a podcast or an episode like this, it's 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 probably the other end of the world. You know, like 12 hours from where you yes, guys. It's are. 8 a.m. here in Durham, North Carolina. Yeah, so. exactly. So, um, but it's it's been an interesting journey. Um, for me, I kind of got into entrepreneurship marketing pretty much by accident. Um, yeah. um, like this is something that I've shared so many times. I am the last person who should have ever become an entrepreneur because it's not just something that we were told in my family, the way we were brought up, it was like, you know, you go to college, you get a job, um, that's about it. And entrepreneurship was always for other people. So for me, um, a kind of like a health scare made me kind of stay home. Um, and after I had my child, I, I just couldn't go back to work. So I was at home and I was wondering, all right, what can I do to kind of keep me active, keep my brain working? And um, I just pretty much stumbled into, into blogging. I've, I always had an interest in, like you said, branding, which is, you know, your, your expertise and then marketing as well. And just kind of sharing content out there. I just started growing an audience organically and everything kind of led, um, led from there. And email marketing was something that um, I was just kind of drawn to because um, I saw people doing it in so many different ways. And some of, some of the ways that people kind of engaged with email marketing made me go, um, really, is that, the, is that the way you want to do it? Um, so I <laughs> it's a little, felt like it can get a little sleazy, right? Like it can exactly. Get a real, so yeah. I felt like an outsider when I started out because I felt like, I, is this really how it should be done? Can there be a different way? And I started kind of experimenting with different ways of talking to my audience, different ways of engaging, and 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 yeah, that's that's kind of like my story in a nutshell. Well, I'm glad you shared that because I think that's something you know we're always trying to find. Uh, we curate guests for the show and. Um, me and my team are always looking for people who have diverse voices and have different approaches to things. Yeah. Um, and email marketing is just one of those things where I know I was very reluctant to do a list and to do traditional email marketing because I, I am a consumer as well. And I'm just getting inundated with these like really sleazy newsletters and people selling all the time. And it was just not my vibe. Um, and yeah. when we, you know, when I, we discovered what you were doing, I really love that it was seem very authentic and genuine. And so that's a big reason I wanted to have you on today and to have you share your tips with us. So if you're new to Branding with Friends, this is, we share three tips from experts. So Mira's brought three tips for you about optimizing your email list and how to use that in a genuine, authentic way, not a sleazy way. Um, and we're going to save that third tip for the end. So make sure to listen all the way to the end of the episode if you want to get all the value you can from Mira today. But Mira, I know you've brought these tips for coaches, consultants, and service business owners about email marketing. So what do you think, you know, using your zone of genius, what's the first sure. thing somebody should focus on? Yeah. So, 
you know, the, the thing with email is the, the number one thing that people always say is that it's so overwhelming because you don't know where to start. There are so many different pieces, you know, um, how do you grow your list? And okay, what happens after someone gets on your list? Um, so the what I like to kind of share with, this is something I share with my audience as well, is use kind of like a minimum viable approach um, and do it in a way that you give your subscriber, the new subscriber or your audience, um, kind of like a complete experience because you don't just want to grow your list. You want to nurture them as well. And what a lot of people, when they're starting out with email, they, they end up doing is that, all right, they focus on, all right, let me have my lead magnet. Yeah. Um, let me start growing my list. And that's it. They don't think about what's the next step. What's the after. And they only think about that once they are ready to maybe they have um, a package that they want to sell or they have some kind of a coaching program, they're ready to put it out there. Then they're like, okay, I need to go to these people, but I haven't really talked to them for I don't know how long, you know, and um, that is when kind of like alarm bells go off. So you don't really want to put yourself in that situation um, and you don't, you don't want to think about your list only when you have something for sale or only when you're kind of prepping for a launch. So the minimum viable approach is something that um, it starts with the attract phase where you're attracting people onto your list, goes on to the nurture phase, and then obviously you've got the conversion part as well. All right. So um, for me, I would say always start with one lead magnet. That's so like a lead given. magnet, think, just so we can explain, is like yeah. that free PDF or that exactly. free video or that special thing that you offer that's valuable that people exchange, give you their email address for to Correct. subscribe to your and, list. Correct. And the thing is, one thing I want to highlight specifically for um, service providers and coaches, you don't want to offer a lead magnet that attracts a, a lot of um, a DIY audience because that's not who you're attracting. Yeah. High five back. You know, it's, yes. it's, it's, um, that, where were you five that, years ago when I needed to hear that information? <laughs> Yes. Exactly. Yeah. And, and that's a trap that a lot of us um, fall into because we create a lead magnet and it, that ends up attracting the wrong audience. And it's no fault of the audience. Um, it's just that this is what you offered and that they, you know, they're on your list. So um, for service providers, one of the things that I've seen work very well, and I've seen this on a couple of sites, um, are people who do quizzes that are related mm. to um, their topic. And the thing about quizzes is... Um, it works so well because it leads you to kind of like um, the result, um, but it's 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 very convenient for you to kind of swoop in or, or seamlessly, fast, right? Yeah, talk, yeah, exactly. Talk a little bit about how you can kind of bridge the gap or how you can help. So quizzes work very well. Um, I've seen people sharing like their framework or roadmap, kind of like this overview, this overarching view of their methodology, um, their process of working. So something like this, you know, like a quiz or a roadmap, it's, um, it kind of stops you from attracting the DIY audience. So DIY audience, they're really attracted to like checklists, things that they can do it themselves, that they're not really looking for a coach. They're looking more for like a digital product, like a course or a membership or maybe an ebook. And uh, for service providers, you don't really want to fall into that trap um, and, you know, attract an audience like that. So yes, lead magnet is one of the first things you should do, but pick the right one, you know, especially well, I think like, that, you know, that also comes consulting. back to me to branding. And so it is, you know, I'm working with clients right now. I do a lot of brand and marketing and business consulting with clients that have gone through the branding process and those who haven't. And our big question is, well, what should this lead magnet or opt-in be? Yeah. And it comes back to, you need to know what it is you're doing. You know, where is your right. focus? Where are you the biggest expert? And who do you want to attract? Who are your ideal That's clients? Yeah. Because if you're a coach or a consultant, you really want people to come to you wanting you to help solve their problem, not yeah. th that you don't want to self-serve the solution. And exactly. coaches in particular, I see it's a big challenge of um, there's so much free value out there that they're providing transformations for free, basically. Yeah. And so this, I think having that right mindset of the minimum viable approach of, uh, okay, I'm going to put something out there that's easy to digest, but that is that introduction to- yeah how I can provide a solution to your problem, not exactly. how you can solve the problem yourself, which is a totally Correct. different mindset. Yeah. And I'm really glad that that's where you started. I think we should also yeah. take one step back because I know that people in my audience are going, I don't even have an email list. So I right, just want right. us to talk really briefly about yeah. why we need to have an email list. And, okay. um, you know, just, if you could just tell us really in like 
basic terms, why, yes. why, why should someone have an email list if they say sure. have a Facebook page, a LinkedIn profile? Right. Isn't it just, I know a lot of people feel like it's just one more thing. So tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, sure. So for me, um, the thing with the, an email list is you can actually swap, you know, you, you have email service providers, you've got your MailChimp, you've got your ConvertKit and all of that, but you would, you can actually print out your email list and you own that. Yes. Um, and, you know, the, the thing with having a Facebook group and stuff like that, just to share, I I had um, a, a, a kind of like a mastermind buddy have her Facebook group of about 15,000 people just kind of shut down overnight. Oh. So it's, it, she just lost that because of, I don't know, you know, Facebook People's, can be yeah, I saw pretty all over the place. Had, um, whole profile got hijacked by something. Like, exactly. Those things can happen or yeah. they change the out. Like also when you're posting uh, the on algorithm. Instagram or Facebook or whatever, not all the people who follow you can see what you post versus if you send an yeah. email, a large majority see Correct. what you send, exactly. whether yeah. they open so, it or not, another story, but. That's another story, yeah. So yeah, this is the thing. So, you know, even though um, people are doing social media and stuff like that, there are marketing stats to show that the return that you get from your email list is, I don't know how many times more than what you would do on social media. And um, you're not at the, you know, kind of like the women fancy of any algorithm change. You, you know, you can kind of insulate yourself from, from that if you have an email list. And it's not about the size of the list. I think this is where people get really uh, bogged down. They're like, you know, it's going to take me eons to get to 10,000 or whatever that is. You can have an amazing, decent, amazing, decent, whatever, you know, along the spectrum, depending yeah. on what is kind of good for you with a small list what matters is the relationship with that list so it's really not about the numbers because I know um when I, when I kind of read certain income reports and stuff like that they've got amazing huge lists but the income that they get from that list doesn't really match up yes. um so, I like to say followers don't equal figures Yes. Yeah, that, exactly that. And you can have a huge list with maybe like a 10% open rate um, compared to someone with a smaller list, which with a really good open rate where, you know, subscribers are engaging with you and they are really loyal fans. So it's the, the number is really relative. It, it really doesn't I'm matter I'm really much. glad that you brought that up because I know that many of you listening to this may not have a list or you may have a small list. Um, I, I became a six figure business with less than a thousand people on my list. Um, and I don't, I don't have much more than that at this point. I'm sure it will grow over time, but, um, yeah. you don't have to have a million people. Followers don't equal figures. You see people who have hundreds of thousand followers. That doesn't mean they have hundreds of thousands of dollars. I promise you, you will be the one to <laughs> yeah. tell you that. Um, and she, yeah. you're hearing it from her today too. Um, and I know coaches who make multiple six figures who, you know, one in particular I'm thinking of who had 600 people on their list. You, it's not about numbers. It's about the, it's really quality over quantity. And again, that's why I want to have you on to talk to you, um, especially in the context of branding, because the more s smart you are about it, the more strategic, okay, who having the right people on the list matters yeah. as well. And that, that happens where you're sort of advertising and say, Hey, here's my free thing. And if you're my ideal client, you're going to be attracted to my free thing. And if you're not, please stay off my list yeah. because that's yeah, not going to yeah, be you don't need them. Yeah, list. exactly. Correct. I, I mean, you would rather not just add people for the sake of building up your numbers. Right. Um, you're going to yes. end up paying for that, you know, for those people. And it's, it's just not worth it because they're going to skew your stats. And then you're not going to get a good sense of, are these people really interested in, in my brand and my business? Are they not? Um, yeah, you, you don't want to get into that kind of thing. An, and an please issue. don't agonize over how many people maybe aren't clicking on things or you put all this work into something. It is such a, I feel like one of the things I've learned having had a list since 2015 is it's such a long game. It's such a long yeah, game. And just like blogging is and SEO yeah. is, it's, yeah. um, they're not settings, they're strategies and they take consistency yeah. takes time and value delivered takes time. And that's, you know, honestly, like when you think about the closest friends in your life, the people you rely on, those relationships did not happen overnight. They happened over yeah. years. And that's all business is really doing is building up these relationships with people, right. especially in a service-based context, because you want people to yeah. hire you. They have to know, like, and trust you. That doesn't necessarily happen super fast. With and it a takes lot of time. People. Yeah. 
Um, yeah. So I think one of the other things with the email list is really trying to be top of mind. Like you said, for service-based businesses, you want to be top of mind when they are ready to hire. And sometimes it takes time. Yeah. Um, like the buying, the journey, the buyer's journey is not the same. People kind of think it's linear. Like, all right, I find you, I buy. Yes. You know, but sometimes it, it, there's this loop and then they go find someone else or they, they, they don't get a good solution and they might come back to you. So the whole point with email is to be top of mind so that when they're ready to kind of hire someone, you are the one that they go to. So it's really about building those relationships using email. Well, yeah. and that's a perfect, and I think that you could have easily been describing branding. That's exactly why you do branding is to stay top of mind with people and to constantly put your message out there so that when people are ready, they are ready to work with you. Yeah. They say, they say, oh yeah, I remember who you are. So, you know, we've talked, that was, you've, you've given us a lot of value already. And just that one tip, minimum viable approach and all this other information about like what an email list is, why follower count is not the biggest thing to focus on. What is the next biggest thing that we should be thinking about? Yeah. So the next one is, um, I would say first to have a nurture sequence. So don't just stop at attracting people, have that after the next step. And don't be afraid to kind of pitch your services during that nurture sequence. So some people call it the welcome email series and nurture sequence. It's pretty much the same thing. So you want to have a kind of like a um, this kind of planned out journey for your subscribers after they join your email list. And you can do this pretty much on auto with a nurture sequence or a welcome email series. This is just about, it could just be maybe five to seven emails. You could do it slightly longer if you want to. And, uh, you know, you talk about things that are relevant to your brand and your business. So you don't want to talk about everything under the sun. Um, what is your end goal at the end of that sequence? Do you want to get them on a discovery call? Are you pitching some kind of a coaching program? What exactly is that? And then work back on what you need to convince your audience to say yes to your end goal and then structure your content in that way. So I think one of the mistakes that people make is that they, I mean, talking about yourself is good, but they don't really have a direction. So they don't really know what kind of emails to have within that welcome email series or the nurture sequence. Um, so when in doubt, always think about the end goal, right? Like mm -hmm. what Strategy. do people need? Yeah. yeah, exactly. What do people need to hear from you in order to say yes? And then um, another thing is don't be so focused on the how-to content. Um, yes, how -to that's content the DIY actually, piece too. Yes, yeah. correct. How-to content can actually work against you. Yes. Um, talk, think about changing perspectives, changing false beliefs, or any myth or mistakes that people have. These are the things that you wanna bring out. And these are the things will get people to have those aha moments or those light bulb moments. And um, they were like, all right, I, I never knew this. She is the one who brought this to my attention. And I think she's someone I can trust. She's credible, she's trustworthy. This is how it's gonna to to lead into that. So my, my top tip, I would say after the minimum Bible would be have a dedicated nurture sequence, a welcome email series, and don't be afraid to kind of pitch your services or have the appropriate ask at the end of that sequence. Yeah. yeah and it doesn't have to be a million sales emails. I think, I think if Correct. you sort of explained it, um, I, I didn't have one of these for a long time. I was doing a good job of, of consistently sending out like uh, email a week, go on a newsletter yeah. or things, but I wasn't, when you signed up for the list, you weren't getting anything from me until about a few weeks ago. I'm like a reform, I finally got my yeah, act together. Right. Um, and it feels, you just, basically what you can do if you've never had email marketing or anything like that, you create a couple different emails, you put them in an order and then you set it so that when anybody downloads something free from you, they get this series. Um, so they yeah. get a couple emails and then, you know, I, I typically do it where there's a welcome a couple emails and then they get into a nurture sequence that sort of goes on yeah. forever where they get an email from me a month that's like hey i mean you're if you're watching branding with friends you're likely on this list and so you're going to get a tip from me from my greatest hits about branding and that's a great thing and one of the things that makes it wonderful is it's a system and so this is yeah, something that makes exactly. your life easier and you're confident that you're sharing your brand story and your invitation to work with you so you know I think it's great to say, don't be afraid to do that. You don't have to sell in every email, but the whole point of it yeah. is to, you know, someone's interested in you, help them through the journey. What do they need to know to talk to you or to take that next step with the course? Because they came to you because they're interested in yeah. solving a problem. And exactly. I think if you talk up the solution, you know, who doesn't want the solution to their problem? <laughs> yeah. That's why they're there. Yeah. 
So yeah, I, I love on. that you're sharing that. And thank you so much for, for being here today. Um, I know you've got one more tip for us, but before we get there, I know you have some, some great things you wanted to share with our audience. So what, what did you want to share with Branding with Friends today? Yeah, so for for anyone who ha- kind of has email marketing on their radar, I do have um, a book on Amazon. It's called 300 Email Marketing Tips. It's um, very simple, kind of like a starter solution. You know, it, it talks a lot about um, getting started with a lead magnet, a welcome email series, and kind of what to do after that. So that's something that you can go and check out. Or right. I also have a free email course. It's at mira.email slash course. Any will definitely leave the links below. Yeah. Um, that's another way to kind kind of get to know more about um, email as well. Awesome. Well, you can take lots of action with Mira's help. I love that you have a book about it on Amazon. That's perfect. Um, And if this episode has gotten you thinking, well, I have no idea what I would do for that content. I don't know who I'm really trying to target or who my ideal clients are. You can talk with me about that always at greateststorycreative.com. Just grab the free consultation button up in the top right. Uh, Mira, I'm so glad you were here. You shared two really powerful tips with us, which was minimum viable approach, and then have an intentional welcome and nurture sequence where you're not afraid to sell a solution to a problem. What is that third thing that you, we want to make sure we tell people today? Yeah, the third thing is something that um, a lot of people overlook, and that is to clean your list regularly. So um, don't just focus on, all right, I'm going to hard more people on my email list. You want to make sure that you clean that list um, every, every three to six months um, in the least. Uh, and this is because, you know, it's very naturally sometimes, and we are on so many different lists as well, we end up kind of subscribing and forgetting about it. And we just kind of end up dumping those emails um, you know, like deleting them, or some people might even kind of drag them into the junk or the spam folder. You don't really want to do this because um, it kind of getting a little bit technical here, but whenever someone doesn't um, open your emails, doesn't engage with them, or they kind of drag you into the junk or spam folder, it kind of sends a signal to the email delivery systems and the providers, you know, the Yahoo mails and the Gmail that, hey, maybe this is spam. So mm-hmm. what ends up happening is more of your email ends up in spam, even to people who who naturally want to open your emails or who have been opening your emails. So you want to avoid all of that because you kind of get that sender score and you don't want your score to kind of decrease. Um, So not getting, I don't really want to get too technical into it, but it's really good um, practice to clean your list. Um, So anyone who hasn't really opened your email or hasn't engaged with anything for some time, three to six months, it's good to just send out an email and kind of let them know that, Hey, you, you know, you haven't really engaged with my email. Um, That's fine. But um, you know, if you still want to be on, click that link below. Or, and um, otherwise, keep them on everyone. The list. Yep. Exactly. Yep. So if they click, they're good. Um, if not, <laughs> it's perfectly fine. You just go ahead and delete them. And what this does is you will see an immediate kind of bump in your open rates um, and your click rates as well. And it would give you a better picture of your stats, a better picture of, all right, this is something they like. This email is, is really resonating with them. Because you don't have all of those people who are not opening or not engaging, right. kind of bringing down your stats. You know, people who are kind of just gone silent after a very long time. And this happens to all of us. So, yeah, don't hesitate to keep your prune your list and keep it small. Keep it um, kind of healthy and agile, I would say. I love that you With said the, that. Like, you know, yeah. keep your list small is like a message no one is saying. But it's it's quality. Again, quality over yeah. quantity. And keeping in mind that like, you know, Gmail and Outlook and these other email providers, they talk right. back to the email marketers like ConvertKit and Flowdesk and um, MailChimp. And they say, oh, these people are reporting this as spam because that's, yeah. I've noticed a trend. I know I do it with some folks that have just added me, you know, pl- also we didn't talk exactly. about this, but please do not add people to your list without permission. Because I get added all the time to these like people pitching me on, yeah. you know, can we offer these services to create a story creative? No, you can't. And I'll just hit the spam button. And yeah. so at a certain yeah. point, you want to make sure that you're not showing up, that no one's sort of thinking of you as spam. Like, but I yeah. think that three to six months uh, as a check-in and also offering the email of, yeah. hey, did you still want to get these emails? Um, you know, you're still offering them one more chance to kind of stay on the list. But I think treating it like a, like a healthy plant that you prune is a great analogy. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Well, Namira, thank you so much for being here. It was lovely to talk with you about email marketing today. Yeah, I had lots of fun and I hope your audience and um, everyone kind of listening and watching, they take a lot away from this and kind of start implementing a little bit here and there. (laughs) That's the main thing. (laughs) 
Absolutely. So we're going to do our minimum viable approach. We're going to work on our welcome series. And then we're going to make sure that once we're growing our list and we're cleaning it and treating it That's like right. a healthy quality plant. Um, but thank you so much. We hope you guys all enjoyed another episode of Branding with Friends. So many thanks to my special guest, Mira Cawthon. Uh, tune in next time when we're going to tackle yet another topic where branding meets business. Until then, I'm Annie Franceschi of Greatest Story Creative. You can find all our past episodes, free branding resources, and so much more on our website at Greatest Story Creative. Stay awesome.